Hey, this is Lord Araman of Dark Funeral and you're watching Metal Shop TV. Yeah, uh, well, every, every time I approach uh, writing, uh, you know, a uh, session for, for a new record, uh, you know, my first thought is I need to top what I just did, at least for me personally. Of course, it's always difficult if other people agree on if we manage to do it or not. But that's not the point. At least I got to challenge myself. Uh, other than that, I had Already when we were done with the last record, I had some ideas for, for, for the next one, what I wanted to improve. One thing was the drums. I wanted to make the drums more alive to the, you know, more tom plays and, you know, give them a little bit more, more of their own life uh, into the songs. Um, and I think we managed to do that pretty good on this record. And uh, one thing that, that I didn't expect that came halfway through the, the writing uh, process was I got to get I got this kind of filmatic cinematic you know feeling for this is something even bigger the the whole sound picture was bigger than something we've done before uh, and that gave me a new inspiration to develop that side too so but that, that's the cool thing when you're writing you know working on new songs you know you find new ways how to do things. Uh, which gives you new inspiration to try different twists and turns. Uh, so yeah, it was just a great, uh, great writing process and very inspira inspirational. And I think we managed to... I, I think we even brought in more than I expected, you know, that I set, up, set, set out to do for this record. But it, it came naturally, you know, once I was into that, uh, you know, groove. Uh, now for the next one, I have already ideas what I want to improve for the, for the next one, and uh, we'll see where we land with that. But uh, yeah, it's cool when things, you know, give new inspiration to keep on going. Yeah, as I said, we always, you know, if I didn't feel like I can top what I've done before, then it would be pointless to continue. Uh, so we put pretty much hard pressure on ourselves. And y usually when uh, when I start writing, when I when I okay now I gotta figure out at least the starting point on a new record. Uh, the first couple of months is like I'm never even gonna be able to put one new songs together. That's where I. You know, I kind of bury my own grave before I get into the flow, uh, and it's always been let, been like that. But that's because, yeah, I, I don't feel any pressure from the eyes outside, not at all. Uh, it, it's more like I put all the pressure on myself that I need to push myself harder uh, for for every every song and every record we write, and uh, yeah. Yeah, there's different theme, themes, uh, and I think that's something we brought in more and more on the last couple of records, you know, more different emotions, you know, more melancholy uh, songs and more, well, we always had very hatred uh, and, and aggressive songs, but I think we kind of find a better balance and, and give each song more of their own identity and, and uh, each song reflects you know, m m more, more, uh, more stronger emotions, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I think that's something we we just managed to bring in more and more into the into the music and and, and the songs. Uh, and that's also something that, that I find inspiring to keep on exploring. What kind of dark tunnels can you go? You know, there's more than one, and uh, 
maybe you need to explore a few more more different you know uh, yeah so it's interesting Much of it is touring, of course, because we are touring like three or four years, maybe for every record. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I can't, you know, do a lot of things at the same time, you know. When I'm on tour, I want to focus on doing my best that I can on tour. When I start writing a record, I want to focus on that. The good thing is I, that I, now I have already some stuff written. Uh, so I have managed between shows I have managed to at least start to play around with some ideas and uh, I think I'm kind of at a point where I maybe it might be easier for me these days to do it than before uh, so we we'll see and as I said I left left on this tour of course I had some surgery before that I couldn't do much uh, you know writing and new, uh, trying out new music but um, before that, I start writing some new stuff, and uh, and I kind of you know feel like it would be interesting to have the time to continue see where I can go with that. So there will be a shorter gap between this one and the next. <coughs> I, I can't promise anything. We'll see. But at least I'm already on it, and and I feel uh, inspired. Uh, but yeah, our touring schedule is quite in intense at the moment, so we'll see. Yeah, it is. Because as I said before, one thing leads to another thing. And that thing maybe open up a new door that I haven't explored. So, you know, you, you, I, you know, from one inspiration leads to another inspiration and another route. Uh, and that's what I kind of feel is really cool because one thing can open up a door that I never expected me to open or didn't even know ex existed. Uh, so, so it's pretty cool, you know, to be in that situation that you always find new ways. But as I said, I always thought like, "Fuck, man, this is this. I'm not going to be able to do anything. It's like this is the end." <laughs> and then suddenly it just happens of some weird reason. We started the, the, the whole whole period with getting stranded abroad. I, I got stuck in Mexico. Uh, our drummer was stuck in the U.S. Voc uh, vocalist in Chile. You know, with all the planes just stopped uh, going. So we started with being stranded around the world. But the, the the reason we were stranded in different parts of the world was because we had been touring a lot, a couple of years, and we just finished our touring cycle and plan was to start as soon as you know everybody was like okay we go on vacation and then we resume writing for the new record and then bam the epidemic you know corona just closed down the world uh, so so the plan was you know basically when we came home when I managed to get home back from Mexico and the first thing I did was start writing you know continue to write on what I already had so for us it worked out kind of good uh, but of course, it, it, as a you know musician and as a band, you know it was a difficult time. But uh, we we spent them well, and uh, we didn't have to cancel any shows, as far as I can remember, because we hadn't anything booked. The plan was to to focus on the new record, so uh, the timing was kind of good in one way for us. I think, I mean, already back in the day when we did tour together, we were one of the most successful tours, you know, back in the day. So I knew that combination to bring it together again, now was going to be really good. But of course, I couldn't expect this, you know, good and uh, you know, amazing uh, feedback and, and uh, attendance at, at the shows. Uh, so that kind of takes me a little bit by surprise. But I still was 
confident it is a good combination. And I don't know. For me, it's like Cannibal Corpse have their own identity. And when they start playing, it's just a wall of fucking death metal coming your way. And on the other hand, when, when you... Dark Fiona also have, we got our own identity too. And we are another fucking wall of sound when we start playing, you know. So we kind of, I guess, you know, this is, this is a tour for people who like to be run over completely by the wall of sound. Uh, you know, that's what we deliver. And they do it amazingly good. And I think we're doing a pretty good job too. So, uh, and they see, you know, it's two hardworking and professional bands. You know, it's not just attitude, we're fucking delivering hard time too. And, and I think that's, you know, the talk goes between the fans uh, and the visitors. Uh, and I think that's what's, you know, kind of filling up, you know, the next couple of weeks also, you know, because people see that this is a tour that really delivers. And uh, it was the same, we toured the US in November, December together. And it was the same. It was the most successful uh, tour in the US uh, of, of metal at that time. And there was so many good and, and big metal bands touring at that time. But we we fucking nailed them all. And I heard that the other day that this is also here in Europe. This is the biggest tour uh, for a long time. So it feels great, you know. And I'm glad that people really can connect to both the death metal and the black metal you know, unity. Because it's extreme music with two different, uh, in two different styles, but still we have the extremity, you know, together as a unity. I don't like to stress into getting, you know, you always gotta get into a certain mode before you go on stage. And for me and, and for, for the guys, it's basically been like one hour before stage time. We all meet up in the dressing room, start you know taking step by step and and get into the right mood and get prepared. And uh, I think that one hour is is very important. Of course, sometimes we've been coming in late and just had to rush. We can do that too, but uh, I prefer to just you know slowly get into into the right uh, you know mood. No, not really. Uh, well, I, I have ideas, but uh, we try to pitch it, or, or at least I, I, you know, try to pitch it to our booking agency, and they try to pitch it to promoters. But no one have really, you know, showed the interest that I was hoping because we, we have a lot so to offer for for the crowd and something that I know the crowd are asking for, and uh, we have some really fucking awesome ideas that I would like to do. So we see. Uh, yeah, we we'll see if we manage to do something about it, but uh, so far, uh, you know, the interest haven't been as good as I was hoping. Uh, it's, it's their loss, for sure. Of course, yeah, there, there's both of those, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm I'm the kind of guy that. I, I don't really look in, in, the, in the past because there's no reason what's done is done. The only thing I can do is to better myself, better the band, look ahead trying to bring, bring the band forward and just keep on pushing, pushing, pushing. And uh, you know, I'm, I can be satisfied, but I'm never that satisfied. That's why I always feel like we can do this and that better. We can bring more into this and that, you know, that was kind of keep keep me going. I still have the hunger and I still want to develop. I still want to, you know, better fucking everything with the band. And uh, I guess that's one of the driving force, you know, that keeps, you know, keeping us going. Uh, never satisfied. Oh yeah. And, uh, it's even, there's actually a VHS <laughs> tape of that, which I would never look at. But I remember I watched it sometimes 25 years ago. But yeah, I had a, had a band before Dark Fiona called Satan's Disciple when I live up in the north of Sweden. And 
we did it wasn't really a real gig uh, the first the first one we did but we kind of borrowed this place in in the house where we was rehearsing it was a small stage so we like okay let's see how it feels like going up on the stage so we brought in some friends maybe I don't know 10 max and uh, put up a video camera and uh, well you can see me standing there on stage and uh, very fucking super nervous <laughs> uh, and I was nervous the first couple of years we started touring with Dark Funeral too you know I didn't really feel comfortable about going on stage it just happened but then I kind of had to change my mindset and now I don't of course I can get nervous but not like like nervous like I was yeah, you would understand what I mean if you saw that that tape. You were like, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, we all got to start somewhere. Well, I already do. I work a little bit with design. I've always been doing that uh, uh, on the side of the band. I mean, I, I was working with graphic designs and marketing and stuff like that a uh, long, long time ago for for record label, booking agents and stuff like that. So uh, now I kind of, yeah, with, with the Corona thing, you know, you, I need needed to find something to, you know, a job. And the job that I had in the past, like physical job was to work at concert, but, and, and warrior theaters and stuff like that. But that was closed down as well. So I was kind of fucked both ways. So I got to figure out, okay, wh what can I do? It's like I always worked with design, but I never, you know, made my own things in, in that way. So I, I kind of opened up my, or started up my own signature brand uh, with jewelry and stuff like that, that I feel like I want for myself. And then there was interest, so I kind of have kept working on that, uh, still in a small scale. But uh, the interest is there and, and I have plenty of uh, new design ideas that I'm working with with some people, you know, jewelry designers and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I like to be creative in different kind of ways. It's always been me uh, and I like to kind of run my own business, do, do it my way and do things I, I like. And uh, yeah, I guess that's that's what I'm going to try to focus on also on the side of the band, you know, work more with this design. Well, in the sign of the Black Mark is obviously a very great record and, you know, really meant a lot when it came out to me. Um, but there's, there's lots of good records from Mr. Storm Satanas, you know, when that record came out. And if you st can still listen to it to this day and it's still as good, uh, Emperor in the Night Tide or, or the Eclipse, you know, uh, that's also a milestone for me. Uh, usually I have a really difficult time to remember all those great records that really, you know, open up that kind of world beside what I was doing at that time. Uh, but there's also other good, you know, records, even before those records that, that uh, were killer. But uh, I mean, I'm old school, you know. Listen to Dark Funeral. That's that's where my heart is. But I necessarily does really listen to that music always, you know, because I'm doing it myself. But that, that's still, you know, where I come from and where where I feel it's black metal to me. Uh, but at the same time, you know, new generations must come in like it did before me and like I did once in a while, you know, once. At, up on the time and I remember when we started you know people were like yeah, you, you know this metal was a big thing so people were kind of complaining oh you want to do black metal what the fuck you know and I don't want to be one of those guys you know uh, especially older guys you know complaining on the younger generation that oh, you can't do this or that fresh blood we need fresh blood into the sea and maybe I don't agree or you know like everything but that's the way you keep the scene alive uh, otherwise, it would just get boring and stagnate. And uh, yeah, if you don't like certain ways it goes, don't fucking listen to it. Don't pay attention to it. That's that's how I do it. Uh, but yeah, 
I don't want to be one of those guys that I hated. You know, I don't want to be one of those, uh, yeah, guys I hated when I was younger myself.